Hello everybody, this is Axter99. Now, this video is going to really probably only interest people that are real gamers or people that are considering indie game development themselves, as I have just started a course on learning the Unreal Engine. So I'm taking a course that I paid for off a Udemy, and I'm learning something that wasn't suggested in the particular course. Now, if you guys are interested in learning how to make like an action RPG, uh, make your own open world as you see me doing here, then by all means, I'll have the link to the course I'm taking down in the description below. But something that really wasn't pointed out, at least not yet, by the instructor of this course is we're starting to paint in trees. And to paint in trees, uh, it looks like it's really uh, useful to turn trees that you might get off the marketplace. This is only for the Unreal Engine, not for Unity or anything else, guys. Uh, I'm learning the Unreal Engine. That's kind of the engine I decided to go with over Unity and Godot and all the others for 3D games. I just find Unreal puts out more immersive, more realistic looking games. And though it has a higher learning curve, it's something that really piques my interest. And if I'm going to make the jump from 2D games to 3D games, I think I just want to go ahead and take the full jump, learn C++, and learn how to make the most realistic, best games I can make. But anyway, guys, we're learning how to turn, like, trees, as you see, really nice. When you put these in the world, they already, by default, move in the wind, which I think is really cool. Same thing when you drag in a uh, cloud system. You drag this in. So, for example, you look for volumetric uh, clouds, and when you find those, you can just drag those into your world, and automatically the clouds will move. So you'll see that I have those right here. Yeah. Volumetric clouds. And I haven't done anything with them except drag them into the world. And it pops these moving, really nice looking clouds in your world by default. So this isn't anything you have to buy or anything like that. I say this because I don't know how many, even Unreal games, I've played where it's just like a JPG picture in the sky of clouds. And there is no moving clouds in the sky. And I tend to notice stuff like that. Now, I have not finished working on the outside mountains. These are simply just a placeholder until we get more realistic uh, mountains on the side. But I'm working on this area in particular here, and we're turning uh, tree assets that you can get for free on the Unreal Marketplace. And if you drag, you can drag these one by one into your world, but that's going to take a lot of time. It's going to tax your CPU and video card a lot more to handle singular trees that you place into the world. So what we've learned is how to turn the trees into a foliage type and then spray those into your world. So you go to foliage and then you have different types of like shrubs and grasses and stuff like that, which you can see I've already placed. But then you can end up painting trees into your world, which I'm learning in this course. But one problem with that, guys, is when you make a tree foliage and you put it in your world and you don't go in and change any of the settings, one thing you can end up doing is you can end up having trees that you place in your world that from afar they look pretty good. But if you're walking right by this area, you ha might happen to notice this gap right here. And I don't know how many times as a gamer I've noticed trees and shrubs and stuff like that sticking up off the ground when I play a game. And my first thought is, oh my god, this developer is fucking lazy. Like, why doesn't he take care of that? Well, for the first time ever, guys, I've actually learned and figured out myself. My instructor hasn't went over this yet. So, for example, I've got some uh, black alder trees from the Unreal Marketplace for free. And you can just, you know, search black alder trees on the uh, Unreal Marketplace and find this particular asset kit, which I believe includes a lot of different shrubs and trees. So when you highlight, for example, all these different trees you want, and you drag them over into your foliage, uh, foliage objects here that you can paint. By you put, drag these over here, you select which ones you want, and then you go into your paint, and you can paint those into the world by setting your density, your brush size, etc. And when you drag those over, it creates a foliage uh, copy of the actual tree. So that's going to take up, like you see right here, this black alder forest uh, nine right here is right down here is a foliage type. And the foliage type, when you spray it in your game, is going to take up a lot less CPU. It's going to tax players that play your game, uh, memory and video card a lot less. 
So for anybody who's just going in and placing these forest trees as is, one by one in your world, first of all, you're taking up a lot more time than you need to. Uh, you could simply drag these into your foliage type, spray them in the world a lot quicker, and be able to, you know, your game is going to perform a lot better. But when you go in, guys, and you simply drag these trees, so you can shift, for example, you can uh, shift-click, and then shift-click 9 here, and you can drag all of these right over your, into your foliage type right here, and then you can paint those in by selecting whatever you're paint, wanting to paint, whether it be shrubs or the trees you drug in or whatever. But when you drag these over, the uh, Unreal Engine is going to ask you if you want to create these as a foliage type, and then it's going to ask you to save every particular tree. So you'll have to hit save nine times when you do that. But that's not even what I'm talking about this video, guys. What I'm talking about is after you create the tree foliage type over here, you'll have these. If you save these in the same folder, you're going to have these foliage types as you see. So this tree right here is now a tree nine foliage type. Well, if you double click on this, guys, let's go back into select mode here. If you double click on this foliage type, right, you're going to see here a placement and a Z offset. So I've played around based on my game here, and you see I have some pretty steep, uh, uh, like, hills and stuff like that. So I've placed these, and I messed around with this, and you see that besides this one tree, which I uh, left up intentionally by just spraying those without changing anything in the foliage type, you'll see that after I made some changes, uh, most of my trees are looking a lot better as far as being actually dug in the ground, even if they're on a cliff. So what you can do, guys, is you can go back in. Again, you're going to drag the trees you want into the foliage type uh, under your mode before you spray them. And then before you start spraying these things in, you want to double-click on your foliage type. For every foliage type you've created before you spray it, you'll want to double-click on that. You're going to get this window. So you want to go ahead and Z offset this to the minimum and maximum you want this thing going into the ground. So what I like is I can, I messed around with it and for my world here, uh, 50 to 40 seems like a uh, good number, but you want to go negative 50 and then negative 40 because you want these things going to the Z offset. You want these uh, Z offsets going down into the ground and that's why you're going to choose like negative 50 to negative 40 and that's what I found works pretty good for the uh, for the world that I've sculpted here and I have sculpted this entire thing all these hills and everything like that so the Z offset right under placement when you double click on your tree foliage type I don't think you necessarily need to do this with like shrubs and stuff like that because this might bury them halfway under but you might even want to do like a negative 5 to negative 3 as the offset for even like little bushes and stuff like that might help a lot I mean it's really going to depend on what kind of terrain you've made how big your trees or shrubs are or whatever you're going to put the Z offset on. But this right here is all you need to do. And then just make sure you click save after you do that. Another thing too, guys, is how many times have I played games? So real quick while I'm here, how many times have I played games where I walk right through trees uh, in an Unreal game? Well, I knew that was a simple check mark. I knew that was something really easy. It's the same thing, guys. Under your foliage uh, type here, if you come down to your collision... Right here. So by default, this thing's going to say, like, uh, no collision or whatever, by default. So if you're doing, like, a tree, if you're doing a shrub, you probably don't want to set a collision. But if you are doing, like, a tree or whatever, you can come down and set that to whatever you want from these choices. So I've just se selected block all. So that'll block cameras, that'll block enemies, that'll block you from walking through it, etc., etc. And then, again, just make sure you save it. Another thing that's interesting that the course uh, instructor did let me know uh, that's pretty useful is... By default, this aligned and normal is going to be checked. And if you read this here, uh, this is going to say whether the foliage instances should have their angle adjusted based on, you know, the terrain they're on. So by default, these things are set to normal. So you'll probably want to uncheck this because if you don't uncheck this, what will happen is when you spray these trees on, this tree, based on the slope of this angle, this tree would go out like this. So that's what they'll default to do when you spray them in. They'll all be like going diagonally like this or based on whatever slope. Now, if you have a perfectly level slope, then they'll go up, go up fine. But when this is checked, and it's checked by default, the align to normal is going to align these trees going out based on the angle uh, of the ground you place them on. So I would definitely uncheck that. Uh, Everything is going to be, you know, applied to your particular game. But this is three little pieces of advice that I can give you right now 
from early, very early in this course. So I'll give you guys, if I have any more, you know, help tips that I figure out or that I learn while taking this course, I'll put those right here on my YouTube channel and I'll definitely make a playlist for, you know, anybody that this might help. So this is like game dev uh, tips that I'm going to start making in the Unreal Engine. So hopefully this helps somebody out. If it has, be sure and comment down below. Let me know. I would love to know uh, if this video has helped any of you guys out. And again, my Z offset, guys, neg uh, minimum is negative 50. Maximum is negative 40. That's a good starting point. Uh, if you don't have, you know, slopes nearly this steep, then maybe you can go a little bit lower. But you'll want to adjust these parameters based on your world and your project. So, again, be sure you let me know. Be sure you like the video, guys. This has been Zach's 99. We'll see you in the next video, everybody. Take care.